specific. I was on I the cover. Like two or three of oh, those. Cool. I drank a beer before I got on the plane. I took a picture of an old. What did you take? Uh, not me. We we did. A friend of mine went to Germany, and, I, we, and uh, we we ate something before we ate our meal. Some kind of sleeping quite pill. Make we never remembered anything about the flight. <laughs> don't look like <laughs> landed in Germany and like woke up. Yeah. It's like, if you don't take that stuff regularly, did, it's did like they think they would drive there. themselves? Uh, they were uh, like the Jetsons okay. vehicle. Okay. Brenda, come in. Oh, this is, I read this. This is Uh-huh, article. I read this yeah. too in the book. Yeah. yeah, I figured you all got it, but I thought it was no, really interesting. No, it's a good, it is. I appreciated it. What really did me is the, um, there was another one in there about sidewalks. It's, Here it is. Uh, it's right on the back. Yeah, so we're just talking about keeping the cameras for keeping it clear, not for repairing damages, right? No. Mm -hmm. No, they are reliable. Oh, no, the new is that they the are reliable way. for damage. Once we fix against the state law. It says townships are responsible for the reasonable repair. That's not how I read it, but now you've got me questioning. That's not how I read it. Shall maintain a reasonable repair of sidewalks adjacent to highways in their local municipality. Two highways. Hello, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to have a question for the local council? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did. I was there we go. <laughs> Jack, it says read, read the last line, the last little paragraph. Okay. Does not fall within. What's the definition of sidewalk, please? Oh, it's in here somewhere. But. I misread this entire thing. I'm so, so glad you said walk. that. Oh, okay. I read it exactly opposite of what you just said. That. But now I see what you're saying. He's not coming today. It's a Miles discussion anyway, I think. Yep. Yeah, it really does. Yes, sir. I'm waiting for Brenda there. Oh. You're okay. I'm okay. okay. It does mean we should talk more about that, I think, to enforce. Good evening. We'll call the meeting of the Bath Charter Township Board of Trustees to order at 6.01 p.m. We'll start with uh, roll call. Mr. Funes Bliss? Here. Ms. Butler Challenger? Here. Ms. Wilson? Here. Ms. Hagerman? Here. Ms. Kellerman? Here. Mr. Phillips? Here. Mr. Rosecrans? Here. Thank you. Next up is civic reflection. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance and end with a moment of silence. So please stand if you're able and join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a moment of silence. Thank you. First item on our agenda is approval of the agenda. Before we do that, I want to extend a big thank you uh, to Trustee Hagerman for convincing me that we should not hold the town hall tonight. Uh, today came so fast <laughs> versus our last meeting, uh, so I appreciate that you uh, advocated we push that back. Are there any uh, changes to the agenda we have in front of us. All right, hearing that, I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as it stands. I move we approve them as written. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a second. Any other discussion, questions? Hearing none, we'll take a voice vote. All those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, agenda is approved. Anyone have a conflict of interest they need to disclose tonight? Doesn't look like it. 
That'll move us into public statement one. This is limited to three minutes designated for statements concerning current agenda items. So if anyone in the public would like to address the board, please head up to the lectern. There's also a second chance to address the board at the end of the meeting, another three minutes for each uh, public member that you can address us on anything you'd like. Is there anyone who would like to give a public statement tonight? All right, no. <laughs> I don't see any county, state, federal, or other agencies in the audience. Karen, did you expect anybody tonight? All right, we'll keep moving then. That'll bring us to the consent agenda, 7A, to receive and file minutes of the Election Commission and the Planning Commission. Is there interest in approving the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Being that it's a consent agenda, we do not have discussion, so we'll move right to a voice vote. All those in favor of approval of the consent agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you much. That brings us to item eight, approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes, regular meeting February 20th and regular meeting March 4th. I think we could take them separate or together as you please. I make a motion to accept the regular meetings for February 20th and the regular meetings of March 4th. Is there a second to that motion? Second. All right. Is there any discussion about either questions about the minutes? All right. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of approving both sets of minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. That brings us to item nine, the approval of vouchers. Is there anybody who'd like to make a motion about this tonight? I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers as submitted. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion or questions about the vouchers? All right, hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Pumas Bliss? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Kellerman? Yes. Ms. Hagerman? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Ms. Butler Challenger? Yes. Thank you. That passes. That brings us to item 10, the treasurer's report. No treasurer's report tonight. Item 11 is committee appointments. <coughs> uh, I have not put forth any committee appointments for you tonight. That brings us to item 12, where we do have several township committee reports. We'll start with the safe routes to schools, go to broadband access, road commission update, and end with the finance committee update. So let's start with safe routes to school. Elise Erickson. She's not here. Not here tonight. She requested, but I haven't heard anything from her. All right. So we'll get in touch with Elise and hopefully be back on the agenda at a future time. Uh, that takes us to broadband access. Um, the... The challenge process is happening quickly, um, so much so that they're sending out all of this information very um, last minute, I think, for townships and others to act on. Um, and unfortunately for me, a lot of their, um, their information webinars occur during my school day, so I can't attend. Um, but I did watch part of one and... Um, read the most recent update, and I actually went in today and went into the, the portal that citizens will go into to start the process if they want to challenge it. There is a tutorial video, um, and officially that starts Monday. So I think our township's role will be as information sharing. So I think it will be our job to share the links um, and share a little bit of information probably starting next Monday about on our social media probably about how residents can view the map and then challenge the map if they want. Um, personally, I found the platform and the tutorial a little on the tech heavy side. I feel that you need to have just an understanding of some of the, the language and things that they use, even though they have a tutorial that kind of shows you they are speaking as though the average person understands words that I don't know the average person, the average internet user may actually know. So that may be an issue for some people and I'm not sure how we would be able to help them through that, but that's probably the one 
area of confusion that I see arising from people attempting to use this. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that that's on R. <laughs> and they do have, of course, um, areas, help areas. But anyway, that should be starting next week. When did they, sorry. Go ahead. When did they send the link out? Um, Do we have a link yet? I mean, you said it's going to be live on next Monday. I got it through the MTA That's like, the one I saw. Okay. that came out That's today, right. so, I so. believe. Okay. So I clicked on it. It took me to their portal, and if you hit start the challenge process, then it immediately brings up the tutorial video. But that the, was that the link for the township, though, not for residents? I think that was the link for residents. I don't know. I have Karen to go back might and look be able then. to okay. offer better information on okay. that. Um, it looks to me like it was for residents. Okay. Karen, should we put something on the website so we can maybe promote it through Facebook but, and direct them to the website? Yeah, I was speaking about that with Kate prior to the meeting. We'll do our best that we can to make it user-friendly. Um, mm -hmm. That's part of the tech heaviness is that mm -hmm. um, people may not understand uh, we were just discussing that if they show green going down your road, but then it's red coming from the road to your house, like we need to challenge those um, types of access as well okay. uh, because there's money available to help connect. And sometimes residents are being quoted seven, dollars $8,000 to make that connection. And the average user is not going to want to um, either can't or won't want to expend that mm -hmm. amount. So okay. um, we'll try to make it as user friendly as we can, but we'll have to see what we can do with the information when it is available. Okay, and I think also, if it's red, then that's good for those people mm -hmm. because it means that they are unserved. And anybody who goes through this process and stays red is on the list to become served. And so I believe this money would cover that. I don't think probably that the internet service providers are gonna change the amount that they wanna to charge to do that, but I think that this money would cover getting the service access to those spots. Now, once you have that access, you're still gonna to have to pay your monthly bill to WOW or whomever, but you at least will have that option. <laughs> So do you have enough information, Karen, to put that out on social media and Friday report, those types of things? Oh, we will do that. We'll take a look at what came out and start pushing it out to our residents uh, the best we can. Multiple media channels. Great. Anything else, trustee? That is it. Any other questions for trustee Egerman? All right, thank you for that report. We'll move to the road commission update from the superintendent. Thank you. Um, I would welcome Trustee Rosecrantz to jump in uh, anytime he feels as though I've missed covering something or if he has more to add to this conversation. Um, we met um, with George Baker, went with us last week um, and met with the road commission. Um, you'll see in your uh, packet there is a, a, a small amount of information that I shared um, because I believe that it's pertinent for you all to understand the investment that we're making in our roads and how we compare to other townships. We were happy to find out that our cost share for this year is um, over $112,000, which helps our money go further. Um, and that um, later on, we will be discussing additional road projects that that will help us uh, fund. But in the meantime, there's an investment report on Bath Township and how much we've spent on local maintenance, on routine maintenance, bridge maintenance, um, winter maintenance, traffic signal maintenance. Um, so if you have any questions um, on these, I would be happy to have uh, a representative of the Road Commission come back and talk to us more about what we're doing in our community. But I really do feel like we're investing in our roads and, and we've made huge Im improvements in the condition of our roads. I think this graphic would be a good social media post as well. I think that would be really informative to folks to see how much money we're investing in the roads. Thank you for that suggestion. I have a question. Go ahead. Is this money that comes from the county or the township or? 
State? Okay. State to the county. State to the county. Okay. Yeah, it's Act 51 money that comes down to the to the road commission and then they determine which projects to use it on. So we don't actually get a say in the projects is used on. We just are the recipient of the funds eventually through the work we do. Cool. And then our investment is on top of this routine maintenance investment, right? Correct. Which is an additional several hundred thousand dollars. Anything else on that to share? Um, I don't, but if um, this body is interested, I can um, definitely bring um, either the managing director here or um, another member of that board to discuss anything that you'd like to. They always make themselves available to our township if you're interested in that. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions for the superintendent on road commission information? All right, that brings us to our last township committee reports, the finance committee, Treasurer Wilson. Um, yes, we're talking about the fire trucks because we gave ourselves a deadline to the end of the month of March to figure something out. Um, Trustee Rosecrans stated he believes back in 2017 after the 26th budget was audited that they made a motion to save funds. I did not find that motion anywhere in the 2017 <coughs> minutes. I've actually looked through multiple years of minutes. <laughs> I have found in the 2019 budget, they budgeted $200,000. Um, and it was committed for fire truck replacement, but they spent 185,000 of that in 2019. And then in 2020, I also found they budgeted specifically again for committed truck replacement funds, um, 60,000, but they also spent that on things in 2020. So as of now, I have not found a motion that was made to save funds for a fire truck. I also looked back, um, they have not in their budget since 2021 put anything in vehicle replacement in the budget. The fire department has not. So there are no funds except maybe $15,000 from 2019. But not, have you, but maybe more before that? I have not found anything. I went back to 2008. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we need to really look at our revenue expenditures, a millage possibly to help fund a new fire truck. What does the board think? Ideas. <laughs> well, that we're overdue. I mean, the tr both trucks, as I understand it, are over the average lifespan. That is correct. It, but they haven't problem. budgeted. Right. It's a problem. I mean, wow. And the, the police and fire board that fund takes from the township general fund every year to help maintain their budgets. We need to make a plan. So I need ideas. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Sherry. It seems like we need a plan. Buying them now seems like sort of haphazard and we don't really have that money sitting around and the the trucks are sort of at the age to be replaced but the chief made it really clear and like right. nothing's not working Correct. nothing's you know nobody's in danger that we should start thinking about it uh but it does take a year and a half yeah to get one yeah i you know <laughs> yeah. we're gonna talk right. later in another update from yep. the treasurer from the finance committee about some other expenses that we have learned uh, exist, and it seems like we need to have a larger conversation about revenue across the board Correct. for our pension program, for fire trucks, for the things that the millage has sort of rolled back on over the years. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation would be we, we have the larger conversation. Hold off on the fire trucks now, knowing the chief is satisfied that everyone is safe. Yes, because he said that in December. When and we we're going to have to have a conversation about the, the um, pension program here mm -hmm. this year. 
uh, and the fire, police and fire millage, we have to decide on next month, yes. right, to go yes. on the ballot in August. Yes. So, like, we've got these other things in yep. front of us, and they all seem to tie together to me. So that's, that's as I've reflected on this, what I think we need to do. I think we need to be a, a more comprehensive right. plan, well, to Sherry's point. One of the things, too, is a year and a half, almost, almost two, close to two years to get one if we order it today. So that has to really start to be a priority. We don't want to have a truck fail when it's needed. That's, that would just be a disaster. And they're both over their age, so I think that that well, and we have to look at also just because our trucks say they're they're over their age, our trucks don't go on runs like big cities yeah. go on their runs. So I don't think ours have been used as much as a normal fire truck, say in East right. Lansing or Meridian Township, has been used. They don't have the miles on them. Right, which can be good and bad mechanically. So we just have a lot of. Decisions to make in the next couple months. Planning. Yes. Oh, sorry, Al. <laughs> He's the, in charge. Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they have kept very good maintenance on the truck, so. Correct. Um, they have kept them up, and that makes a big difference. Yes. We only have, I think, it was a little over 100 runs that is fire related. Most of our runs go with the EMT. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. 90% of them. So that was my update, unless somebody else has anything to add. Thank you. So should we consider this the update that the Finance Committee promised by... The end of March. The end of March. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you've got more to discuss down further in action, right? Correct. Okay. Any other fire truck related or finance committee questions. in general questions for the treasurer? I guess we'll just get some more information about the millage upcoming. Those would be where my questions are, but yeah, that's at the, I think we're doing that the next meeting, aren't we? Maybe we had to get that information from it's somebody. Possible. We have okay. to do it soon, or it won't be on the ballot. <laughs> we have to do it in April. Uh, but you'll see down at the next conversation that's coming out of the uh, finance committee. The I don't want to use the word problem, or I don't want anybody to panic. There's no reason to panic, but we do have some coming changes that need to be made, sort of holistically. And I think the either this millage or a different millage. We we have a revenue issue. Uh, that we're going to have to discuss in short term because of the election. Mm -hmm. Unless we don't want to put it on in August, but I think it's that's the recommendation from the clerk that we do that. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions for the treasurer? All right, thanks for that. No First Finance Committee update, yay. <laughs> Small victories. I know. Uh, unfinished business, no items for introduction discussion, two items for action. We'll start with the second reading and adoption of zoning ordinance number 31.87. Uh, our planner is not able to join us today, so the superintendent will be filling in, but we have had this once in discussion. We've had this once uh, by vote, so you certainly could ask questions or clarifications, but this is now the third time uh, you're seeing that. Did you want to add anything, superintendent? I do at this time. Thank you. Mr. Supervisor, in light of the little short discussion we had, I'm, I'm not sure what your, um, what your preference is in this matter. Uh, if it can be amended at a later time, if we discover that in fact there's maybe an issue, I don't know if that's your, your preference. My thought is it's a uh, um, compliance discussion we're going to have to have this complaint-driven system based mm -hmm. on what we just read in this article from MTA seems like puts us at risk. So I, I we probably do case. need some sort of functioning out of someone on the staff side to do some sort of annual review or cursory walkthrough or I think Meridian does like half the township one year and half the other. It does seem like we have to switch to a more proactive compliance vehicle. <laughs> okay. 
but mm -hmm. I do think that's probably a switch that the superintendent is going to need to manage. Maybe that's something you could, it's all within your authority, but maybe mm -hmm. you could think about it and come back to us on what that could look I like. I would love to do that. I think there needs to be an educational process with um, yeah. everyone that has a sidewalk as well as a compliance um, performance and, and how we choose to walk and inventory them. Um, we do receive complaints, and I can say that the last couple of complaints we've received were resolved easily with the homeowner, um, and I hope that is what is to continue um, with the new. But for with them being new, um, I don't ascertain that we'll have a lot of complaints really up front, but as they yeah. start to age, it will be an issue. It'll be helpful to, like, on-ramp the process mm -hmm. so it doesn't feel so yeah. um, sudden. Mm -hmm. For those in the audience, uh, the board has an um, article from the Township Focus magazine that we all receive from MTA. There's copies on the lectern as well. And it's a uh, question and answers about roads and sidewalks. And that's what uh, Trustee Phillips was uh, referencing about our conversation. It just happened to be in this month's uh, magazine. And so I brought a copy, even though I know you all get it, <laughs> to highlight this specific article. Um, what is reasonable repair and reasonably safe? What I don't understand if a person gets a pothole and they lose a tire or front end, what does reasonably repair and reasonably safe mean? Are you talking about the roads or the sidewalks here? This is one here. It happens to be the the roads, but yeah, then also the, the sidewalks was uh, Did use some similar very language. interesting. Those sound like legalese words, so let's turn to our legal <laughs> eagle here. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> reasonableness is just generally the, the duty of care that comes with maintaining something. So if it's in terms of uh, roads, it would be anything that you're statutorily obligated to uh, maintain to a certain degree, and then as it would be uh, generally acceptable in the community that you're in, which I know is a long way to just say reasonable again. Um, so, it, but it, it's a vague term, um, but they, you know, reasonably maintain. Um, yeah. I would also offer, if I may, um, on the page three of 10 um, of the ordinance, it offers repair and maintenance of sidewalks. And it describes um, a rise or a drop of more than one inch between any two sections, more than two cracks of one fourth inch in width or more, any section of sidewalk which is tilted in excess. So I think there are definitions and um, information in the ordinance to help people understand what might be reasonable uh, for them to maintain. I also would, would add in just reviewing what's here in the uh, guidance from the MTA that I think that the steps by enacting this amendment to the zoning ordinance would be uh, the township taking proactive steps to limit its liability in this space. I know it says that, well, if they had 30 days uh, of notice before the occurrence of the injury, um, that, that they could then be liable. But at the same time, it's whether or not you're exercising reasonable care, which I think enacting ordinance like this um, furthers that and shows that the township is doing something to try to maintain its sidewalks. And this doesn't uh, conflict with any of this because what, what the zoning ordinance amendment is essentially doing is putting the onus on the property owners. Now that doesn't change it from the township still being responsible for doing it because the township has to actually enforce its ordinance. If it doesn't, well then it could be could be liable. So the township still maintains its liability under the, the law that's laid out here, but this allows the township to require property owners to actually make the repairs and, and go on and, and do it. And I know that the concerns expressed about a complaint-driven process as opposed to the township actively monitoring it, I think that there probably does have to be further discussion um, with how exactly it would be implemented throughout the course of of it going because the township does have a responsibility and obligation to ensure that the sidewalks are maintained. It's really helpful to know. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. It seems like this ordinance 
update seems timely and in line with what we're, we've been discussing here, it's process on the staff side that would come next. Is that sufficient mm -hmm. to sum up what you just said? That's right, yeah. Okay, great. And you feel good about that? I do. Superintendent, okay. Great. It's nice to be on the right track. <coughs> Jeff? Can I just ask one question of counsel? Yeah. I'm kind of confused, I yeah. guess. Um, because the, the ordinance that's going to get passed seems to put the onus or the responsibility, I should say, on the homeowner. But in MCL 691.1402, it says specifically, pursuant to that, a city, village, or township shall maintain and reasonable. So is it the responsibility of the homeowner or the township? I'm kind of confused yeah. about that. Yeah, so, so the regulatory authority that's granted to a township through the MZA, which this is enacted under, provides the township with the authority to uh, essentially maintain the sidewalks mm -hmm. uh, as it determines best for the general welfare of the community. So the township could uh, maintain all of the sidewalks at its own expense and cost, or it can enact an ordinance like this that requires individuals within the community to do it, and that's a lawful exercise of its regulatory authority under the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. Thank you very much. So, but that still doesn't eliminate the liability for the township. It's just in the manner in which the township is actually exercising uh, its care of the sidewalks. That We're is. taking responsibility by passing and enforcing the ordinance. That's right. Got it. That's a lot clearer than <laughs> my original concept. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually really helpful. Helpful. Yeah. yeah. Other questions or thoughts on the ordinance? And if there are none, would entertain a motion to have the second reading. I'll move to adopt the second reading, excuse me, to approve the second reading and adoption of zoning ordinance number 31.87, sidewalk construction, repair and maintenance. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion, questions on the topic? This would be the last time this comes before us uh, before being implemented. All right, I want to roll call vote. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Kellerman? Yes. Ms. Hagerman? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Ms. Butler Challenger? Yes. Mr. Jones Bliss? Yes. Thank you for that. So that ordinance will move forward into enforcement. Uh, next up for items for action, employee contribution to MERS pension, Treasurer Wilson. <laughs> there is a memo that was created that's inside there. Because the complexity of the issue needs to be carefully considered, There's, um, we need to do a new um, resolution to extend the pension contributions through the end of the year. Um, because like we talked before, there are revenue and expenditures because um, we need to figure out what we're going to do with raising our revenues. So there is a recommendation to continue paying our pension through the end of the year, the 5% difference. Um, we've been paying it for the first three months. Um, this will get us through the end of the year, so we have time to figure out how we're going to make changes to our pension system because we have to negotiate with the union next door. So, Karen, do you have anything you'd like to add or Ryan or Brenda? Um, I would support what Treasurer Wilson just indicated. Um, this is a very complex issue um, and there are several ways in which we can fix these issues. Um, and to do that, we would need to run actuarials with a third party firm. Um, those actuarials take anywhere from four, six to eight weeks um, to get those results back to see what difference it makes in the calculations for the employees. Um, so I would offer that it is a very complex issue and with the assistance of our accountants and our law firm We've been able to try to understand to date what has been enacted um, But in order to make changes to the pension plan, um, we need uh, more time 
So I think it will go through the time in which that we are um, considering millages as well as budgeting um, for the next fiscal year. Um, and so I think there's a, there's a lot that's wrapped up into this and, and deserves more time for consideration. I'll say as someone who is not in the system, I thought I understood the system. <laughs> I did not understand the system. It is far more complex uh, than I thought. Uh, I think we all need to get some education on it. Um, there's like four variables that we can twist and turn to get the amount that we would charge and the amount that we would pay. And with that many variables, I mean, you could just like do so many different things to get out of it what we're looking for. And I think we all need to understand that um, to, to come to a decision. So there'll be some education, I think, that we will go through. Uh, I think the township employees aren't necessarily as up to date on how this all works. So I think there's some education on their part because this will be a change for them and there'll be negotiations with the union. Uh, so I think there's a lot of education to happen. Uh, and I think it was a really ambitious, if not silly thought that we would solve this in three months. There's just, there's, there's just no way. Uh, and it's all connected to the other issues, the fire trucks, the millage for police and fire, the uh, township, you know, charter millage. They're all connected. So to come to you and say, like, we need one fire truck and we're going to switch the <coughs> MERS payment to this, it just, it's, it's too complicated to, to, to do that. I think we all need some time to, to understand it a little bit better. So what we had discussed in the finance committee was that we would do some training on both sides to understand the issue as it stands and then to understand what recommendations the finance committee might put forward in terms of changing those things. But it, it is really a, a look at revenue writ large across the township and where we need to move things around, which could mean cutting some things, it could mean increasing some things. Uh, it's just too complicated. So. That's why you're getting the recommendation from the treasurer here uh, to just sort of like hold steady for the rest of the year while we figure this all out. And I think we ran the numbers, and I'm not sure if it's in here, but we think that at max it would cost the township an extra $150,000, uh, which isn't nothing, but it's also not outlandish. That protects our staff from uh, the amount going up to 25 plus percent. Uh, and sort of protects them while we figure out what to do next. So there is an unbudgeted uh, implication of this change as well that you should all be aware of. Other I assume the employee groups are cool with this. <laughs> I mean. Of course, they're getting it paid for them. <laughs> I, I can't speak for them, but they should be cool. With it. it's, it's a good deal for them, but, uh, you know, this is part of our retention of employees, too, to figure this out. I'm afraid right. we'd lose some staff, and we know how hard it is to fill Position. the positions right now. So I, it feels like the right thing to do. I think, I think I speak for the three of us in the finance <laughs> committee when I say... These are things that should have been looked at two decades ago, and we should have been planning. It, it's, it's the same thing as the fire trucks to me in a different format. We should have been thinking about this a long time ago and had things ready to move now, and we just, we didn't. And now this board is going to have to figure, figure out what happens for that. It doesn't help to sort of like shake your fist at people of the past, but it is frustrating that we're going to have to solve this problem that should have been dealt with all along the way. Yeah, I would offer that um, there's probably been at least five superintendents and multiple boards that have had a hand in changing the system over time. And that's not me, you know, lobbing a grenade over. It's just saying it's been changed over time and the decisions that were made back in 1990 are not the same decisions that we would make today. Um, I think the, to answer your question about are, are the staff happy, um, the staff was more than happy because I think that they thought it potentially would be three months extended at a time. So I think they rec they recognize this as very generous. 
Um, I think it's very important for the Finance Committee to recognize that this is an election year and that we don't want to saddle a new board with a decision um, that we are trying to just understand what, what has happened in the past and what is occurring right now. And to throw that at somebody as they come into office would be, um, you know, really, really not the thing that we would want to do. So I think that we will try in earnest to solve this mm -hmm. in a manner that's good for everyone. Um, I, I hope prior to that. Yeah, I think that's well put. Questions, other thoughts? Is anyone interested in putting the resolution forth for motion? I'll move to approve the resolution to cap and play contributions to the pension through December 31st of 2024, um, resolution number 202402. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, I know this is hot off the press for all of you, uh, so I want you to feel comfortable. Are there other questions or, or conversation to be had before we move forward? All right. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I get uh, this. Hundred and fifty for the rest of the year. Hundred fifty thousand. Does that mean next year's is going to be roughly around two hundred thousand? Hopefully, we won't have because we got issue. three. Huh? Hopefully there won't be an issue because we'll have figured out the MERS situation and... But it's still money that we're it's going to have to go into that fund. Well, it will be budgeted for each line item for each department. So currently the township is capped at 11% um, of contributions on behalf of the employee. This is an effort to take um, the employee contribution uh, not take the employee contribution from 19.96 to 25.46%. So the township is agreeing just through the end of this year to pay that five plus percent difference. Mm -hmm. So while we make the changes to the plan. So once the changes are enacted to the plan, the idea would be that the, the township may, that may be one of the options, the township may uncap and, and go to a different percentage, but then some of the changes that we make may lower the um, the obligation for the employee um, and the unfunded, um, the, the funds that are currently unfunded, I guess the account that's currently underfunded mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. So this is really the township making up the difference for the employee just for this year. Yeah. But at some point we will at some point this year, we will have to change the equation uh, or that increase will have to be covered by us again in the next year or yeah. the increase will kick in that plus whatever increase question. comes after yeah. that for fiscal year 25 on the employee side. Yeah. So I think it's like a lose-lose in terms of both sides at this point. Uh, so the, the idea is there'd be a new formula so that it, there wouldn't be any of this anymore. And I know we talked about it back when Jack was supervisor. And uh, it was, we were hoping that things were going to stay the same. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the economy <laughs> goes crazy. And, yep. uh, Stay marginally the same. Can I add marginally? <laughs> <laughs> marginally. <laughs> Jack's like, I'm Thanks, sorry. guys. Thanks for leaving <laughs> it, guys. We appreciate it. <laughs> To me, this is the, the fair thing to do on behalf of our, our staff uh, and the smart thing to do for us now. And then I think we just have to be better at this moving forward. We have to be better at budgeting for trucks. We need to be better at budgeting for pension changes. It, I said to Karen, this is another sort of symptom of us transitioning into a bigger, uh, more wealthy, if you will, government that we we have to think more long term. Uh, we have to plan for this stuff. Otherwise, we're doing the same thing for folks, you know, 30 years ahead of us now. And that's just not good planning. We can't afford to do this stuff anymore like that. 
Yeah, I have one more thing to offer. I would offer that we are also learning from the municipalities around us. Some of them made big changes in the last, um, you know, most recent five years, um, and then found themselves discovering that that wasn't what they should have done, and they're coming back to do other things to try to fix their pension plans. Um, the city of DeWitt um, is extremely underfunded, and they received a grant this year, but they have to have a correct in, corrective action in place so that they can build back up that pension fund for their, for their people. Um, some people closed out their defined benefit, which is what we have, and went to a defined contribution. Well, that doesn't garner any revenue for the people that are still in the defined benefit. So we are, throughout this process, also taking a look at the changes that have been made by other municipalities in the state and trying to learn from both their positives and their negatives. So, and I think that's what is going to take the most time is understanding what people did and it, did it go well or did it fail? And then will that work for us and what we have here at the township? Any other questions? Thoughts? We have a motion and a second. So we will take this to a roll call vote. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ms. Kellerman? Yes. Ms. Hagerman? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Ms. Butler Challenger? Yes. Mr. Fields Bliss? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Thank you. That resolution passes. So uh, at a future budget adjustment, you'll have that in there for us? I will, yes. Thank you. Including the, the um, substantiation back to this meeting where the decision was made. Great. Thank you. Uh, and I imagine you have some communication vehicle for staff to yes. let them know that that's the case. I will do that. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to 14 new business A, items for introduction discussion. There are none. Uh, items for action. We have an updated 2024 recommended road projects by the superintendent. Uh, thank you. Um, what we have in front of you in your packet is an updated um, budget or memo for the roads as well as tables indicating where some of the items changed. Um, the $112,000 that we received through the Act 51 money through the Clinton County Road Commission um, is going to help us be able to accomplish a little bit more here. You'll see in the budgeted 2024 money, I added um, the Act 51 cost share in addition to the Downtown Development Authority funds of approximately $160,000. Um, you'll notice under estimated project costs, we received an updated uh, estimate on brush spraying as well as Park Lake sidewalk crossings, two of them, uh, for $20,000. And then an updated cost estimate for Hunter Road, which is Upton East to the gravel and um, ending up with a new balance um, that is left over. I, what I suspect will happen is the road commission will come back, to, the road committee, excuse me, will come back together and determine if additional projects can be completed with the remaining funds. Um, and then you may see another update, one more update after this. Um, does that leave any money left for in those DDA funds, or is that about it? Um, there might be less than $10,000 left in there, um, but it was the desire of this board indicated an interest in using. Um, they, the, the suggestion actually came mm -hmm. from resident Rick Curtis um, to use some of those funds to help with roads and sidewalks down in the DDA area. Um, which I thought was a great suggestion, so I budgeted for that, and um, I think that we can accomplish a lot down there in, in improving sidewalks in that area. So it leaves a little bit, but not, not a lot. And that's just in addition to what the Safe Routes to School is paying for Correct. also in that Correct. area. Correct. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Uh, the only thing I wanted to say was that the, uh, the county uh, was quite happy with the, the price of the bidding this year. Uh, blacktop that is true. material was uh, about $2 a ton cheaper, I believe, is what they were I saying. I thought three, but. $3. Yeah. So it's, uh, 
it does help our money go a little further. Other questions? This is up for action tonight, is that right? Yes, I would just like your concurrence on the direction that we are heading with the updates that I've noted. With the uh, and drive piece, mm -hmm. how does that show up in our audit? Does that carry on the books of 23 when we sign the agreements, or does it carry on the books in 24? It'll carry on the books of 24. It was a project that we were unable to complete. Um, so that will be another item that you'll see when I bring you budget adjustments, um, is that the intention all along has been to carry it forward. You'll see that documentation come to you in a future update. But gap accounting doesn't make it stick with 23 when the agreements were signed? No. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. The accountant and the auditors, they're both aware of this um, and have raised no issues to us at this time. Okay. All right, then it looks like we're looking for a motion. Yes, Oh, go ahead. Uh, Ruth and Riley is the one that we got the contract with that is going to finish up uh, and drive in Jerry Lane. Just for your information, then Michigan, uh, Michigan Black Topping got the new contract this year. Oh, okay. So Ruth and Riley didn't get it. For the rest of the work? For the rest of the work. Okay. That's good to know. Is anyone interested in putting forward a motion? I make a motion to accept the agreements for improvements for the roads that were put forth. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, questions? All right, let's do a roll call vote. Ms. Kellerman? Yes. Ms. Hagerman? Yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Ms. Butler Challenger? Yes. Mr. Fumes Bliss? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Karen, do you know if any other Clinton County Township is putting in this amount of money for their roads? I would have to ask, but I would garner no. Um, I think because of, we have been the recipient of some um, state funding um, for the non-motorized path along Webster Road and then next year with Chandler Road, um, I would offer that we're probably leading the way in investing in our roads. Well, I'm really motivated by competition, so if the Road <laughs> Commission wanted to give us a gold star I will someday, check with uh, the Clinton County Road Commission and see what DeWitt really Township's nice to doing. to say that we're winning. Yes, <laughs> and see if they can say we're winning. It does explain so much, doesn't it? All right, that takes us to the end of our business uh, tonight. We have the superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, a reminder that on April 1st, we will have a town hall meeting regarding Norm Fasteners here at the township. Um, I am hoping the room is big enough because the supervisor had uh, suggested we move location, which I thought might be really confusing for our residents. So I indicated that I thought this room would be sufficient. So um, I, I hope it is. Um, and I hope people are patient if they turn out in droves to um, offer their comments and questions. Um, I don't want to eat crow on that one. Um, through the lens of what I just said, <laughs> now I'm trying to get as many people as possible to show up. And I do hope they do. I think there are questions and concerns in the community, so I do hope people turn out to, to get that information. And I think um, the board the saw people. my email. I, I sent that to the Planning Commission, to the developers, to LEAP MEDC, mm -hmm. uh, to the business owners, to Norm Fasteners themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of you. Mm -hmm. And I've been getting mostly yeses from everyone that they plan to attend. Our next step will be me figuring out with Karen what kind of outreach we do to the okay. community. <laughs> um, in, that, in that vein, um, the, town, um, the next township newsletter that goes to all property owners will be upcoming, and that is a vehicle that we plan to use for communication regarding those special meetings. Um, in addition, we could do some type of postcard or direct mailing to people to help them um, attend those meetings for those important topics. Um, that newsletter will be going out this week, um, so hopefully people will read that uh, and, and attend. It's encouraging. Um, the deputy superintendent and I will be interviewing candidates for assistant to the clerk, and then the clerk will join us on a second round of interviews. Um, we are happy to be... Um, 
moving along on this as the last election we found ourselves um, shorthanded and this will be a huge um, help to township office operations and elections. And I will be attending a special meeting of the Housing Commission on Thursday. Um, there are some things occurring there um, that need um, attention and I think the Housing Commission is doing the best they can to address concerns and state reports um, that some, thing, some changes need to be made. Um, I will bring more information on that back to this body after I attend that meeting and have a better understanding of what is being considered and maybe moving forward. Uh, but I'll keep you apprised of that information after my attendance on Thursday. Any questions, concerns? Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to our second time for public statement. This is when anyone can join us to say anything for up to three minutes. Their time will start when you approach the lectern and start. This, again, can be on any topic. Anybody from the public want to speak to us in the second opportunity? Welcome. Good evening. My name is Judy Darty. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, Karen, that's great news to hear in that report that uh, we'll get crosswalks on Parkway mm -hmm. Road. Um, last year in May, Friends of Parkway took the road committee, the road commission and uh, members from the Township Planning and Public Works, and we did a walking audit down Park Lake Road. We started at the community center and walked down to the boat launch. And uh, one of the most uh, important things that we observed along the way uh, with the Road Commission was the fact that uh, uh, crosswalks would really increase the safety down there. So I'm thrilled um, to hear and to see that some action is going to be taken on that. Um, in addition to that, we would like some additional signage down there. I think that it's appropriate that we have a sign that says we're approaching a beach, you know, in 500 feet, you know, just because there's no sign down there. And if you're from here and you're going 35 or 45 miles an hour down that road, it'd really be nice to know there was a beach ahead. <coughs> you know, so little things like that. I think that there's one uh, place along the road that we should have uh, hidden drive signs. Um, I think we could avoid some um, uh, accidents if we let people know that there were hidden drives ahead and ask them to slow down. Um, so I'm encouraged and I feel good about that. Uh, secondly, uh, Friends of Park Lake had, traditionally has a summer solstice party and um, the event is scheduled for the summer solstice on June 21st. Uh, we'll come back to you later and talk with you about um, ways in which we can partner together, but. I just, since tomorrow was the first day of spring, I just want to get that on your, uh, on the, on their, on your horizon, just so you know about it. We will be celebrating summer, and what an absolutely fantastic asset Park Lake is to our community. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Judy. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who'd like to address the board? Hi, Rick Hockey. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but Judy. Uh, get the button for me. So I would like to uh, put the idea forth of our summer solstice. You know, we've had it for, I believe this will be our 10th year. And uh, it's pretty much the only gathering that the township has anymore. And so I would really like to see some official um, partnering, if you will, with the township, um, just to make it an event to, you know, kind of make up for bath days. And it could be bath days because it is in bath and uh, a lot of people from bath enjoy it. So um, if you have ideas on how you think it might uh, be improved, by all means. Um, but I would really enjoy uh, the opportunity to partner with the township on, a, on an official basis so that we could um, really go forth and make it even, a, even bigger, larger event more successful. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. Anyone else want to address the board tonight? All right. That brings us to board member comments. I think I went to Kate first last time. So Sherry, you're up. No comments. Thank you all for coming. Jack? Uh, I'd just like to thank Treasurer Wilson for 
all the research she did, I have some recollections of that as well, I'm sure Al does, um, but pulling together what really happened with that money was a, was a long trail to follow from 2008, and I'm sure she spent a lot of hours reading through that to bring that information to us, and I want to thank her for that. And that's all I have. I have no comments tonight. Thanks for attending. I uh, was contacted by our uh, Parks and Public Works director offering to give us a walking tour of the potential trail area as part of our special, I shouldn't say as part of, prior to our special meeting scheduled for uh, May 6th. Uh, that sounded like a great idea to me, so I want to send out some dates to you all. And I think what we'll do is like choose a date and then have like a weather date in case the first date <laughs> doesn't work. Uh, and then those of us who are interested, uh, Ben will take us back there and, and show us some things. Uh, I thought that was a good way for us to spend some time as we move into that special meeting to talk about the possibility of the trail. So please look for that in the the coming uh, days and weeks. And I think that's, that's it for me. Brenda? I don't have anything tonight. Yep. Uh, up at the county, just for your information, signs that the county is putting in will run roughly $200 a piece. They will, a lot of it depends on how much, what the sign is, how big the sign is, but uh, just to let you know that that's what they, that's what the county charges us. They don't. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I don't believe I have anything. All day. right. That brings us to our last item of business, which is adjournment. I move the main We have a, a motion second. and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. We stand adjourned. Thanks for an efficient meeting tonight, folks. Last month, I uh, offered to take the tour, or take the 